Yes. Hey, I am Mustafa Sharif. Thank you so much for listening to Urbanistica podcast. Today, I'm super happy. We're going to talk about the social city, how to be social in the city and meet people that you don't know. My guest is the master when it comes to meeting people <laughs> that actually you don't know. He had lunch separately with more than 1,000 people. So I have the pleasure to welcome you all to Urbanistica podcast. Thank you. It's a pleasure being here. Thank you so much for giving your time. How are you doing? I'm fine, thanks. I'm um, pretty, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it? Unstressed. I'm not that stressed. Uh, I mean, that's. I mean, my whole business is, like you said, it's uh, it's like centered around my lunches and meeting people. And I do a lot of conferences and seminars and, and stuff and a lot of talks. And of course, in a... When things like this happens, there's not that easy to meet people anymore. So, um, so it's uh, it's a bit slower, but I'm sort of getting used to it. So I feel it's kind. Of, I think it's kind of nice, you know, because yeah. you can sort of concentrate and focus on on things that you really want to do. Mm. So, which one is best for you, ERL or digital meetings? Well, <laughs> I've done some. I've done some digital lunches, some virtual lunches, actually. Uh, and that was uh, that was better than I thought, but um, I must say that nothing beats to sit down and, and sort of you know look the other person in the eye and actually be in the same room. So um, you know I guess I'm old school in that sense, but uh, nothing beats like a human meeting IRL. I can imagine, and I totally agree with you. Maybe I'm old school too. <laughs> I think I think uh, the the physical meeting face to face is the, is the best ever. Yeah, yeah. I think I mean I, I don't think it has to do with old school. Actually, I think it's that's the way human works. Yeah. I mean that's, but but it's interesting also because now you have to th you come to think about more what kind of meetings do I actually have to meet the person personally and what kind of meetings can I do virtually? So that's that's what that's one thing that's pretty good with. It. All these things that's, yeah. that are happening that you sort of you have to prioritize and you can actually do meetings virtually that you don't really have to do physically yes exactly well uh, Ulf, you're our storyteller so how would you like to introduce yourself and please tell us what are you passionate about yeah <laughs> well i'm passionate about passionate about eating lunches well i'm a you know I'm a, I'm a journalist i've been working as a business journalist all my life and um I do this, uh, I came up with this idea of, of meeting people that I haven't met before for lunch uh, about seven or eight years ago. Uh, I was uh, getting this new job as ed editor-in-chief of a business magazine called Vecna Safada, and that was my way of trying to meet readers and to get ideas and inputs. So that's where the, that's where the whole idea started. So then I invited people to contact me for, for lunches and um, then it sort of got out of hand and uh, i've been doing this actually every day now for the last five years wow so how many people do you have well, on the... it's about um you know it never it never started as an idea of you know i'm going to do like a thousand lunches so it just started like you know i'm going i like to meet people and as a journalist to get inputs and ideas and, and meet new and meet new persons. And then after a while it sort of it struck me, maybe I should, you know, maybe I should take a picture and put it on, on social media. And maybe I sh should start counting my lunches. So well today it's about 1,100 lunches. Um, but there's a lot of breakfasts and fikas and stuff which I haven't sort of counted in that, <laughs> that number. So it's more is maybe it's about 1,500. I don't really know. Wow. But are you are you passionate about meeting people or getting new ideas or eating lunches? No, I think that the really I mean there's a lot of things about my lunches that I like, of course, otherwise I wouldn't do it. But I think that's um that's kind of a magic in, in that sense where you sit down with a person that you haven't met before and I don't really <clears throat> I never sort of do any researches or prepare what kind of questions I'm gonna ask. I'm just gonna I just sit down. And then we have a conversation and then to see where that conversation leads. And then when you start talking about things that are passionate for you or the person that I'm meeting, 
the conversation never gets boring. So um, I think that's the sort of the essence of, you know, because, you know, I can talk about this for how long as, but so you, had, you just have to stop me. Uh, but um, but there's a lot of things in our community, I think, and society today, which is very driven by that you, you're you going to meet someone and then you have a purpose with that and you're going to achieve something. And there's nothing wrong with that. But everything is so sort of directed against that focus. And I think it's good to sit down for a lunch where you don't have an agenda. You don't have like, you know, where is this going to lead to? I don't know, but it's going to lead to something. And and you, you don't know what that is. So that's kind of the way you're building a drama into your everyday life. Yeah. So you mean it's, it's better to be a natural and you don't need to have a super fixed agenda, questions and time fixed, right? Right. No, I mean, I have a, you know, I'm, I'm sort of, I have my values. I have my sort of driving forces that I, that I sort of want to, you know, things and mm-hmm. subjects and questions and themes that I want to sort of, you know, talk about and where I want to be. Because, I mean, there's a lot of people connecting to me wanting to have lunch, so I have to choose. And then I choose sort of in, from a perspective of, you know, I want to have a mix. I want to have, I want to talk to people who sort of want to talk about subjects mm-hmm. that, I, that I also care about. So it's not that I'm, a, you know, I'm not, I'm not like a boat drifting on the sea going everywhere. It's, you know, I have a sort of direction in what I'm doing but I don't have like an agenda that I'm going to do exactly this or this or this. Yeah. But Ulf, how do you keep the conversation interesting? I mean, you're meeting so different people and might some of them being boring or not to really talk about the things that you're interested in. So how do you keep this energy in between you two? Well, I think it's, um, uh, first of all, it's, I mean, these lunches, I, I, I take a picture and I write a short story about what we talk about and then I post it on the social on social media and there's a lot of people seeing these posts and I think that uh, and I always say like bring your ideas to lunch uh, so I think that people that are contacting me they have like they sort of you know they know what it's all about they know that it's they have to you know so it sort of makes the conversation interesting to start off with because there's a subject or there's a question or there's something that they want to talk about. So, but, but all my lunches, I always sort of come back to the same, same question. And that's why are you doing what you're doing? And that sort of taps into that, that you're talking about. What, what are you passionate about? And what are you, what, what are your driving forces? And I mean, everybody has that. You just have to, you know, ask the question and normally i mean maybe that's not really what you do when you meet a new person over lunch usually but once you start talking about that it it never gets boring it's always interesting yes and do you what 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 do you gain by all of this i mean you're meeting different people different interests and you're a journalist so what is the output for you well like, like i said i work with different kind of content so I'm a journalist so I write stories I've been a I've been you know like a writing journalist all my life but I don't do that much writing now actually I do more talking so I'm so this is a way for me to collect ideas and people and different contents that that I can which I then can use for different channels so I do a lot of moderating for example I do a lot of seminars. I do. I work as a editor for seminars, and because of all my lunches, I know a lot of people. So I know, you know, I can, I can pick this guy or this woman to put on this panel on stage because then we can talk about this. So this is a way of, what do you call it? Like test shooting persons. If you sit down with a person for lunch, it's pretty. After a while, it's pretty obvious. Is this person going to be good on stage, for example? And so. I see my lunches as like, um, you know, it's, there's a lot of a, there's a lot of data that I'm accessing, and then I take all that data, and then I put, the, you know, I see patterns, and I can make combinations, and I can put together these these, yeah. these kind of datas in different kind of medias. It could be like, like I said, seminars, conferences, could be articles. I do quite a lot of consulting. I do, you know, people ask me. How do I how do I tell my story in the best way? 
so mm. I can help them with that. Uh, so this is not, it's, um, I mean, it's a lifestyle for me to meet people like this, but it's also my business idea. That's the only business idea I have. I have my lunches and then things happens from my lunches. Yeah, that's, 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 that's the magic again. Exactly. That's su super smart, actually. And do you keep in touch with people like just as friends that you don't need to have a business in between, just like a normal friends? Yeah, yeah, I would say that I would. I, I've gotten a lot of new friends sort of through my lunches. And I think that lunch is uh, the format in for the lunch is pretty good in that way, because you have like a limited kind of time, you have like 45 mm -hmm. minutes or an hour, and then you can break up from the lunch is nothing, you know, strange about that. And if you sort of connect it through the lunch, that's, you know, it's, uh, you can, you can always pick up that like in a couple of months or weeks or whatever. And so I don't, I'm, I'm not, a, well, I'm a networker in, in, in that sense that I'll meet a lot of people, but I'm not a, you know, I'm not a, what do you call it, like an act, active network that I always, you know, I keep emailing my lunches or I make connections. It, it's just, you know, I meet people and if things, things happen, things happen. Otherwise, I mean, yeah. they don't. <laughs> do, do, you, do you also get this feeling in the beginning when you meet someone, oh, there's going to be a good, uh, let's say, friendship or business, like you get this magic harmony? Yeah. I mean, it's, it has a lot to do with... You know, conversation, of course, and when you sit down and talk with someone over lunch, it's it's um, it's, I mean, it's pretty interesting to see how people. I mean, a lot of some people they talk a lot, some people they talk less, some people they are more interested in finding you know kind of a dynamic conversation, and you know, it's a bit like I'm think it's a bit like playing in a in an orchestra in a way. You you sort of you have different instruments, and they have to sort of maybe one is playing just solo and that's not that very interesting if you're two people and so i mean it's um it's, it's kind of hard to say exactly what it is but i think you know what i mean it's kind of yeah, you know yeah. you got a chemistry and you sure. can feel that pretty pretty mm. fast when you sit down with the person is this going to you know is this going to lead somewhere is or is it not yeah do you feel that you become a psychologist <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah that's true because i mean when you, when you start asking that kind of questions you know what what are your driving forces what are your passions it's kind of you know i think it's not that usual maybe to talk about and especially with a person that you never met before and it's a bit like you know meeting a what do you say like meeting a stranger on a train you sort of maybe you start talking about things that you haven't even told your your family or whatever so it's uh so i'm i'm like a business therapist <laughs> <laughs> do you do you get tired every time you tell about your passion and so on or every new person is a new story a new day for you no i wouldn't say that because there's a lot of people saying that to me how do you sort of How, how do you get the energy of, of meeting people like this? But it's the other way around for me, actually. I get a lot of energy. I get like a boost from my lunches. So it's uh, it's almost like a, some kind of, you know, like a high, like a chemical high sort of to get, because then again, it taps into that, you know, of, of being curious, of finding new ideas. And that's a bit like a, almost like a, a half for me when, you know, people, things fall into places and you, Oh, I see you talk about this, and so maybe we can connect up with that. Or so it's it's an energy boost for me, actually. Yes, yes, and well, as you know, I'm working with urban planning with everything to do outside the buildings. Your lunches is being in the restaurant, hotels, and so on. Yeah. My question is: Is it possible to to have these kinds of meetings with new people out in the city and have the same kind of conversation? Well, yeah, absolutely. I think so. Because, I mean, the thing is that I, when, I, when I have my lunches as sort of a hub for everything I do, I sort of, you know, I streamlined everything for sort of adapting to my lunches. So, as you know, because we, we had lunch, uh, I, I use, I usually, I, I eat lunch at a specific restaurant. Uh, that was like uh, before it was uh, in a hotel in the center of the city and now it's uh, at the museum at the photographic museum so that's where i have my table uh, and that's all also where i have my office i don't have an office space somewhere i sit at the restaurant and then i work because then you get like for example when you sit in in like in the hotel or in the lobby in the hotel i think that's a perfect place to 
to be in the city. And I like to think of the city as, you know, there's a lot of spaces, a lot of buildings which are actually just standing there. And then you can use them as offices or meeting places. And and that's and this also gives you sort of a natural way to contact people or to come into contact with people, especially when you sit down and you and you work with your laptop or whatever in a lobby, for example. It's pretty easy or you know to start talking to someone beside you or it's more it's more easy than being on a bus or a train or whatever. Um, so I like to I like to think of the city as you know it's a it's a space for me which is mine. It's my space and I can use that space in a lot of different ways. And yeah. working is one of those. Yeah. So you believe location is very important to to have this conversation between you and someone you don't know. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm. But it's, 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 I mean, I think the trick is to find that because I mean, the space, I mean, the city, there's a lot of people in the city and you have a lot of spaces and you have cafes and you have like waiting rooms and buses and stuff. And the thing is to find a way to, for people to start talking to each other to sort of, you know, exchange ideas and stuff. And my, that's, that's, that's sort of the trick with my lunch to find that way. So I have that fine. I, I have that way of connecting with other people, mm. but, um, but it's, but I'm not, I mean, one way of doing that is of course, to find a place where you can sit and work and then you start chatting with people around you. And that feels kind of natural. Um, and I think you have to find, or you don't have to, but I think the, the trick is to find more ways of, making people to connect to each other without being sort of you know forced to it yeah exactly and is it possible for you to have this nature conversation even a short one when you are outside in the city like waiting for a bus standing and buying something in the queue yeah you- yeah it is but I'm, I'm 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 probably i'm i'm probably damaged you know I've been doing this for so long. So <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't have any sort of, you know, problems starting talking to people in, in wherever I, 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 I am, sort of. So I'm, I'm, I guess I'm not the sort of, you know, the average guy, but in that sense. So, um, and the other thing about my lunches is, I mean, I've been having Stockholm as my center. So this is where I have my lunches. And if you had lunches with over a thousand people in Stockholm, you can't go anywhere. I can't move anywhere in the city without bumping into someone that I sort of had lunch with or, uh, and that's, I, I really like that feeling because then it gives you, it gives me a feeling of, you know, Stockholm is my living room in a way, if you know what I mean. I yes, I understand anywhere. you. I do a lot of stuff by myself, uh, but, but, I, but I'm never by myself. I, always when I go out in the city, whatever, you know, go for an ice cream or for a walk or whatever, or go to a bar, I always bump into someone that I've sort of met through my lunches. Mm. And that gives you a very, I think, a very nice connected feeling, you know. This is, yeah, it's like a big living room. Mm, Exactly. And do people find it a bit strange when you talk to them, like when you're waiting for a bus and let's say shopping or something, this small chit chat outside with people that you don't know? Are they well, open to you? Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, I, I don't have a problem with that. And, and I think that's, um, I don't know what you think, but I mean, I've been living in, in like, you know, in, in the, in the countryside and in Sweden all my life. And there's like this, I think there's this idea of Swedes being sort of, you know, a bit tight and a bit stiff and hard to chit chat with, but, but maybe that's because I'm sort of, you know, originally Swedish but um, I don't find it that way because when once you start asking once you start talking to people they they loosen up so it's it's a bit like you know it, they, they may seem a bit you know rough or maybe not not rough but a bit closed when you first when you see them first but once you start talking they always almost always open up so you yes. have to sort of you know you know have to you have to dare to scratch that surface in a way to sort of. Exactly. I have been here for 10 years, actually, and I totally agree with you that from the outside might see like people are cold and they're not really willing to give time to talk to you. But actually, when you knock on the door, they will really open to you and very will be very happy to chat and maybe even help you. So 
I understand that this is what you call a stereotype that people are not willing to talk to you, especially here in Sweden. Yeah, I, I think it's a stereotype, absolutely. And I think that what it sort of comes back to that we were <clears throat> we were talking about in the beginning that uh, what kind the kind of ask questions that I asked, like what are you, what are your passion and what are your driving forces and and once you start sort of, of course you can't sort of that's not like the first question you ask the people in the in the queue before the the kiosk in the street but 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 pretty soon you can sort of try to get down to that kind of and once you start talking about that people open up because i think that people are not sort of that's like um how do you say it it's like uh there's not enough there's not a lot of people asking that kind of question so people want to talk about that but how do you talk about something when people don't ask you? Yeah, yeah. It, then it's, it's the magic. This is the magic way of how yeah, you. Yeah, I think so. So mm -hmm. it has a lot of do has a lot to do with the type of questions and how you sort of pose questions to people, and of course that you actually are interested in knowing. Yeah, yeah. So I yeah. I just wanted to ask you as well. How do we ask interesting question to start this conversation, a natural conversation? No, but um, like I said, I I think I I mean my my favorite question is like what why are you doing what you're doing? I mean, there's a lot of I mean I think as a Swede, it's pretty easy to talk about. You know, there's a few common questions like where do you live? You can talk about housing uh, and what what do you work with? That's like the, maybe the first question. Yeah. And, and so that's kind of an easy question to to talk about, and you can always start with that. That's pretty, you know, harmless. What do you What do you do for a living? And then you can start talking about. So why do you do that for a living? And what what? How come you do that? And once you start talking about that, it sort of never ends, because then you know you have to start reflecting about why am I actually doing what I'm doing, and how does that align to my sort of you know my driving forces and my passions. Mm. So um, it's like a it's like a never ending story once you start you know pulling that string. Yes, exactly. But you mentioned also the important thing also that you show that you're interested and you should be interested in the in the talk, right? Yeah. Yeah, and, for and, sure. Mm. I mean, um, it's a, it's a really good. Uh, I can really. You know, that sort of comes back to the thing that I was saying that you don't have, I don't have an agenda, I don't have like prepared questions because once you start doing that, I think that you sort of, you start to tunnel yourself. You know, you sort of, you start to think about what do I, what can I get from this conversation? And, and once you have like a goal where you want to sort of want to end up where you want to go, then you start narrowing yourself, you're narrowing your focus. And then it also happens that you 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 don't really listen to what the other people, the other person is actually saying because you sort of you're so concentrated and focused on you know how should I pose my next question to get to that mm. to that goal that I'm sort of aiming for. So once you start of you know when you let loose of that, you actually sit down and look the other people in the eye and actually listen to. That what that person is saying, and and sort of trust yourself that you're you're going to come up with a question based on what that person is actually saying. You don't have to think that question beforehand. So that's yeah. kind of a. Um, I think that's a it's a very very sort of magic feeling to actually do that. To actually sit down and listen to another person. Yeah, I really like it. And actually, when I started this podcast, I was listening to your TEDx talk. Oh, yeah. And I was thinking, okay, how can I do this conversation in the best way so it's not feel like it's gonna be natural and not really fixed that like, as a policeman asking you a question and you need <laughs> to answer, you know, a question you need to answer. So I also recommend it for all the people that are listening to the podcast uh, watch uh, TEDx talk about the lunches. Oh, thank you. Very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. thank you. And well, when you walk in the city, you mentioned that. Uh, spaces that are good for meeting like lobbies hotel restaurant do you see other spaces that you see a potential of having a conversation like a, in a park or waiting for a metro like some spot that you know okay there's there's a possibility to start a conversation 
No, but I think I, I think quite a lot about this because I mean that's that's my way of of running my company that I don't have like. I mean, it's kind of special in that sense, maybe that you're having lunch, but there's a lot of people like me, you know, that are entrepreneurs and you, well, you know, you, you can be an, an employed as well, but, but we work with a laptop and we work with the phone. That's kind of the tools that we use and we can sit anywhere. We can have this kind of digital meetings, for example. So you can see that it's very obvious in the city, like in Stockholm, there's a lot of people like me sitting in cafes and restaurants and, and not to mention all these different co-working spaces. But so that's that's one sort of big trend. And the other trend is also that um, we had this discussion, what's going to happen with all the commercial spaces in the city? What's going to happen? I mean, that's pretty obvious now when we have this corona situation, for example. Nobody's shopping. Nobody's going to the store. And that's like, that's a big trend as well, I think, that's going to sort of keep on keep on coming. So... So what do we do with these uh, commercial spaces? And I think one thing to do is to sort of mix this up. And you can you can see that, for example, you can see that in hotels, uh, like the hotel that, that where I was having lunch. They were sort of you know urging people to come there and sit and work in the lobbies because they want to have that flow and they want to have that energy, and that also sparks conversations. You can also see that in in business in um, retail stores, for example, which are now opening up for people come to work and to sit and work in in the stores. So that's one way of of I think in a kind of natural way spark conversations between people who are strangers in the city, where they actually sort of sit down and work and have like a natural way of start to to talk to each other. Mm. So the secret can be also in mix, mixed use buildings, right? Yeah, for sure, yeah. absolutely. I think that's been. Um, I mean, you know this better than me because you're like you you work with this in this field. But I think, and there still is. But I mean, it's 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 getting better. This kind of a it's a very static view on what buildings are today. Like this is this is your flat. This is where you live. This is like the restaurant. This is where the, this is the shop, but I mean everything is getting blurred nowadays, and it's like it's a bit like I like I said before. I'm I like this idea of, of you know viewing the city as my as my space. That's my space. That's my like you know extended living room. I don't have to have like a big flat. It's, of course, it has to do with if you have a family, your kids and stuff, but. I I have a family, but my kids are grown up, so they don't live with me anymore. So I live I live by myself in my flat, and that flat doesn't have to be that big. And then instead, I can use all these facilities that are in the city, like you know, the parks, the restaurants, the hotel lobbies, and whatever. So I'm I'm it's a bit special special now with the corona. I'm spending a lot of time at my home, but usually I'm sort of never at my home. I'm always on the you know, on the run, using different spaces in the city. Yeah, that's that's amazing, especially for me to hear that that you're, you're really using the city. Let's say one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's like uh, I was thinking about that the other day because that was almost like you know, it was almost like a secret that I feel like shit. Hasn't anyone sort of seen this, or is it only <laughs> me that I? I mean, I'm so I'm so rich in that sense. Because Stockholm is, you know, Stockholm is mine. And I can use all these areas which are sort of open for anyone to do. You can just go in there and, and sort of make that your own. So yeah. I, I, I totally almost do the same. Like for me, I just go home to, to sleep and then that's it. I, I don't really use my, my flat so much. I Sometimes I feel sad or guilty toward my flat because I'm not there so much. <laughs> Yeah, I know, I know the feeling because I have, like I said, I had to. I have two daughters that sort of moved out now, and I, I live in a three-room flat, which is a bit too big for me. Because so I have like one room which is only standing there. So sometimes I, you know, I just go on into that room and, and speak to that room to sort of, you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's super funny. Well, if I give you a, a flat or not a flat, a building, what different function you will put there in in, in order to have uh, this 100% conversation between people? Like what are the different function? Function, cafes, restaurants? 
Yeah, I would say that um, I'm pretty, you know, I've been, like I said, I I, I live by myself and I, I'm pretty curious about the idea of, of not having that much living space. I mean, I think it's pretty, I've actually tried that idea of, of moving into collected housing for, for a while. I lived there for like five weeks just to, to get the feeling of how, how, how it works and how it feels. And I like this idea of not having, we have a private space, but it's not, doesn't have to be that big. And then you have like a lot of open spaces where you can do things together if you want to, where you can sort of eat together or you can work together or you can. So I, I like that. Um, I like that way of thinking about a building not being that static. This is where you live and this is where you eat and so on. Like a, like a house where you sort of, you can do everything and and you can do it together if you want to and i think if you create a lot of spaces where you where people can sort of hang out together without being sort of forced doing it then you have like the good i think you have like a good you set the sort of scene for making conversations happens and things happens yes very interesting point of view thank you so much Ulf. yeah <laughs> So what is the next step of your lunches? Are you going to have dinners? What do you do now? Digital lunches? Well, yeah, for the moment I do digital lunches. I've done some digital lunches, but uh, I can also see that people are sort of, you know, yearning to to meet people in real life. So I'm actually, I had like a two week uh, pay, uh, stop for my lunch because photography got sort of closed down, but now they open up again. So now I'm going to pick up my lunches again before the summer, but um, I had this idea of um, getting my lunches uh, out in the world. So I'm having this plan of uh, my my dream is to buy like a camper van and then travel around Europe for wow. like a year. Yeah. And then I can put all those, uh, I can put some stuff in it, like, you know, like a surfboard and a tennis racket and skis and stuff that I'm interested in. And then I just go cruising around Europe and, and having lunch with uh, with uh, exciting people in Europe. That's amazing. So that's, yeah. <laughs> so that's the, so I was actually going to do that this, uh, this autumn, but then uh, Corona came and, and sort of spoiled it. But, yes, I understand. Is there any person that you wanted to have lunch with, but the person refused? No, it, it, it hasn't happened yet. No. <laughs> and is there any person that you want to have lunch with, like a, a wish list? No, I wouldn't say that. There's, there's quite a there's a lot of people po posing that question. But who's your sort of your dream lunch, or you want to have? Yeah. Like, but uh, but I'm not. I'm. The thing is that I'm not. Um, I'm interested in in having lunches with new people sort of every day, because then you get, what happens is that you always get like a new perspective. You always get a new view on the world seen through that person's eyes. And I think that's so, so magic to get that sort of. So and it's, and it's hard to say that his idea is better than her idea or, or whatever. So, but, um, but I also think that, um, I mean, one of the sort of basic or fundamental things, or reasons why I'm doing these uh, lunches are that I want to be, you know, I want to be part of, of making a change because a lot of people that I'm having lunch with, they have these uh, dreams and these ideas and they want to they want to be part of something. They want to change society in one way or they do it. There's a lot of entrepreneurs, but, uh, and I, I like that feeling of being, you know, being part of a change. So all my lunches are about, having lunch with uh, change makers in, in one sense or another. So, so that's sort of my, it's not a specific dream lunch, but I like to have lunch with people who have sort of, you know, an idea of where we want to, where we want to go, or what we want to do with the, with the, with the society. Yeah. And I'm very happy that you give your time for the, to record this podcast. I'm very happy because it's a super inspiring talks. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot. Well, Ulf, how would you like to, to, to summarize what we talked about and some of your reflection and three takeaway messages? 
Yeah, that's a tough one. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, but I think that I mean the the, the 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 maybe the most fundamental thing is that you you know being curious and to stay curious, and that's kind of a, like I remember one of my lunches. He said that after you you've passed thirty five years, you have to work every day to stay curious. I mean, it's very easy to in a way to sort of. You know, it's it's comfortable to be in a sort of perspective, to be in a worldview that you're sort of comfortable with, and uh, but I but I find it very stimulating to try to you know to challenge that, and having these lunches is one way of doing that. To always try to be curious about things, to never you know get the feeling of I know I know this, I've done this before, and always you know try new perspectives and find new ideas so i think curiosity is absolutely one of those uh, things and um and also like you started talking about being passionate and trying to really find your your passion and your your driving force and what are you what are you what what actually makes you tick and i'm always on a, you know i'm on a constant quest to find that and by posing that question to people that you meet, you sort of you have to you have to think about it, and then you can sort of you can compare that to your own views, and then you so it's so my way of lunching is also a way for me to finding out about myself, if you know what I mean. So um, so that was two like curious and passion, and uh, well, I'm not really sure. <laughs> What do you? What do you? What, what's your third takeaway from this conversation? Well, my third takeaway is use the city as your home. Don't look that you yeah. have a flat and then there is a city and there is a boundary. Yeah. Use a whole city and just there are so many interesting functions, people. So just go for it. Yeah, for sure. That's uh, that's kind of my. It's kind of for me. It was kind of mind blowing when I was started when I started thinking about the city in that sense that. This is like, you know, Stockholm. Stockholm is, it's, that's my city. And I can do a lot of stuff in this city. I don't have to be at my, at my flat. Yes. It's sort yeah. of, you know, everyone, not everyone, but there's a lot of focus, you know, on your flat that you have. Like yeah. yeah. How big is it and what kind of, you know, you want to change the kitchen, you want to change the living room and so on. But, I mean, put your focus out there instead, I would say. True. This also might sound crazy, but I have a map on of Stockholm, where I put the functions that I need, like a, a bathroom facilities, where can I shower, where can yeah. I drink water, you know, all these things that I, I, I need if I was in my flat, but I have yeah. them in, in Stockholm and also for free. So yeah, yeah, this, yeah, the city true. gives all the possibility, actually, yeah. to have a normal life without yeah, needing yeah, for sure. so much. For sure. And that's kind of fun because I, yeah, that's, that's absolutely true because I do a lot of, um, I, I do my lunches and I use that as an office, but I also, you know, move around in the city and different cafes and different spaces. And I, I can really feel that, as you say, I have my own sort of mental list of, you know, yeah. <laughs> this is a good place because this is where they keep the music down and they have nice toilets and they have like, so I, I find it almost like a, like a challenge, you know, to find the different spaces that suits me best for different situations. Yes. Yeah. And it's always interesting journey to, to find the, the the secret in between the buildings, in the city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. Yes. So, do you have three hashtags for the episode? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll lunch, of course. Yes. <laughs> and uh, stay curious, maybe. And uh, uh, my city. Great, great. I love them. Thank you so much, Ulf, for giving your Thank time. You. And Thank you. Hope for to listening. see you. Thank you so I much. I talk and... a lot about listening. Now I've been talking, but. <laughs> <laughs> At least for once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Have a good day. You too. Bye bye. Bye. So, thank you so much for listening to Urbanistica podcast. Please follow Instagram and subscribe YouTube channel for Life Talks. If you have any great story that makes our city smarter, please contact me. Urbanistica is being produced in collaboration with Landscapes Laget that working with landscape architecture and urban design, and also H22, Hilsonbori, the making of smart city. I am Mustafa Sharif. Keep up the good work. Keep loving cities.